Well, I think we can safely say that Kinvoice's attempt to recapture Evan's castle has failed miserably. In fact, there's actually nothing the enemy can do in the Genoa phase. Now, I actually, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to that village. But, um, I'll basically explain to you exactly what it's at the time, when the time comes. Now, also, remember when I said before that some conversations give bonuses to love points? Well, this is one of them. And if you're going to pair Edain with Midale, which I'd recommend, you should do this conversation. So you don't really see any indication, but that just gave them a hundred love points. So they're one fifth of the way to fall in love already. Also, she can also have a conversation with Azel, but if she does, then you can't do the conversation with Midale. Just saying that if you want to do an Azel and Edain pairing at one point. Of course, the Azel one has the same result, uh, 100 life points. Now, just getting into position for the inevitable attack of Gandalf's troops, and I'm also positioning for, well, the Ira recruiting plan which I will explain about later, and I want to go into a lot of detail about it because it is a very difficult point in the game, especially first-time players have a lot of difficulty getting her. It's kind of like Narval in Shadow Dragon, except worse because, well, she's more powerful than him and is more annoying, and it's not just talk with one person, it's actually... But again, I'll explain about that later. Now we're going to have to deal with another generic bandit attack. And if you're going to be training Dew, which I don't really think I am, but if when you're playing this and you're thinking of training Dew, this group of enemies would be an ideal opportunity because when he's in a forest, they actually can't hit him at all. Well, he does pathetic damage to them, but they can't hit him at all, so you can just simply have him abuse on them for ages. Yeah, that was 1 HP. That wasn't the best use of her healing abilities, but you'll see a bit later that... And I'm trying to keep her and Midale together because I'm trying to pair them. <clears throat> Alec and Finn are going to be useful just luring these guys. And you, you'll want to move Arden down here because you'll need Arden and Alec on the left hand side, so this path that goes down the left hand side of the forest. And you'll want Sigurd, Kwan, and any other powerful attackers on the right hand side. So this, as I was saying before, would be an ideal opportunity for getting experience for Jew, and he actually gains experience rather quickly. Also, um, I've heard on certain forums and things like that that if you're going for a ranked playthrough, Jew really, really helps your experience ranking, although I'm not sure if it'll ruin your turns ranking. It probably will. Now, interestingly, the AI in this game will avoid attacking characters that they have no chance of hitting at all. Well, in some circumstances it seems like they don't really, but in this case, 
they will avoid attacking you because they know they have a 0% chance of hitting. Of course, they will always attack someone they have a 5% chance of hitting because for some reason the AI just likes to think it'll get lucky. Which it does sometimes, but... Yeah, Jew is pretty weak. But he does get extra gold for each attack, so... And he can give that to anyone. As I was saying before, the AI does get lucky sometimes because, well, this game uses um, one random number instead of two like the later ones. At least it's not as ridiculously hacksy, for lack of a better word, as Battle Tower Pokemon AI, but that's another topic so I, <laughs> that I shouldn't really <laughs> go into. I hate Battle Tower AI. Edain has a men staff rather than a heel staff like Ethlyn, and pretty decent magic, so at this point she's practically guaranteed to heal anyone to full HP, which is pretty nice. Just moving Arden into position too. And you don't want to advance on Genoa until Ira's out of the way. But that'll come a bit later. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Really shouldn't have done that. At least he missed, but that was really stupid. Don't do that. You don't want a priest to get exposed to direct attacks. Because unlike Ethlyn, Edain can't attack at all until she upgrades. Oh, that was annoying too. I wasn't really paying attention that last turn, was I? Yeah, I was really glad I didn't kill that guy because then Azel might have been attacked again and then he might die. Finn's getting a bit lucky with his dodging. Let's just hope he gets lucky with his level up. Ah, uh, alright. As you can see now, Finn's stats are starting to get pretty average and well balanced in all areas, which is pretty much sums him up. Doesn't truly excel in anything except luck, but he's dependable in just about everything else. Yeah, the captain will try and attack you, even though he's only got a 6% chance of hitting. I hate captains. And things aren't really looking too good, so, um, yeah, probably best to send Arden in there. He tends to be a bit of a magnet to enemies. See, I'm always trying to keep it and Middle together while remaining in an advantageous battle position. Yeah, she's very useful as a healer. And yeah, I'm probably going to try and put Arden in front of Azel. Stop any embarrassing mishaps happening again. Just to give you an indication of exactly how fragile Azel is, he actually died in my practice run of the prologue chapter. Yes, the prologue chapter. So it's best to always keep him protected.
Yeah, even though the captain can't really hit you that well, I'm trying to keep him away because one unlucky hit is going to be doing a lot. Yeah, you want to make sure Alec is fairly strong for this next part of the plan, but not too strong, as I almost make a fatal mistake with. Why is Alex dying to our class noise? Just getting unlucky. Oh, and this is when I think about doing that. Yeah, to protect your aim. 